Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'm Arif, your Cloud Learning Journey Partner. Well, in today's video, we're gonna cover AWS CloudWatch. So if you deploy your application in uh, cloud, specifically in AWS, then uh, one of the most important part is to monitor it because if you don't monitor it, you won't know when your application uh, is having some issues or something like that. You need to set up alarms, you need to set up dashboards so that you can monitor all the important matrices. So in today's video, we'll cover that. If Once we cover AWS CloudWatch, once you understand AWS CloudWatch, you can monitor your uh, application very easily and uh, you will have a complete understanding what's actually happening in your application well before i start this video i just want to talk about myself well i have more than eight years of experience in cloud computing currently i'm holding more than uh, 15 uh, certifications related to cloud related to cyber security you can see my uh, certification in the background well uh, you said that i have uh, work experience in multiple companies uh, i can mention ibm as an example well, after watching today's video, you will have a complete understanding like how to monitor your application that you deploy on AWS. So uh, without further delay, let's get started. I have logged into my AWS console and from the search menu, let's uh, look for CloudWatch. All right, this is uh, CloudWatch. I'm going to open it a new tab. So at the left uh, panel, you can see it has uh, multiple sections and subsections. So we'll go through the, the most important one, okay? So at the very beginning of this video, uh, let's talk about the matrices. If uh, under the matrix section, if I click uh, all matrices here, all the matrices will uh, pop up that uh, the service that you're using. So right now under my this account, I'm not uh, running any specific project like a prod project. So that's why uh, I do have matrix led to S3, some logs and some usage stuff. So if I click S3 and storage matrix here, you can see we do have some matrices related to the S3 bucket that we have and also some Elastic Beanstalk uh, matrices. So for an instance, if you're using uh, EC2, if you search for it from here, all the metrics related to EC2 will show up. But uh, right now, as I don't have any EC2 server running on or any AWS services, that's why I do have very limited metrics. But the question could be, how can we use this matrix as to monitor application, right? Well, I'm here to help you with that. So if I select any of the matrices, so these are all the matrices that are coming from the S3 bucket. Cause how can I be sure about it? Cause if I go to S3 from here, uh, S3 console, here you can see all of these names and the same names are present in here. So these matrices are coming from the S3 bucket. And the, Matrix names here we can see the matrix names too. Like the first one is the bucket size in bytes, then the number of objects that we have inside this bucket. So for an example, let's think we want to monitor how many objects or files we do have inside our bucket. Okay. So for that reason we can select this specific matrix and after that we can see here under the count section and uh, if uh, we want to add this to a dashboard, suppose uh, you want to create a dashboard specifically for this uh, information, then you can do it uh, from here, like add to dashboard. So if you click here, then uh, we need to create a new uh, dashboard. So let me create one for testing. So I'm gonna name it test. T test. And the type will be line and uh, Let's uh, create this one. Okay, so now we will add this number of object uh, matrix under this dashboard. Cool, so now we do have a very cool dashboard with uh, one, opt one uh, matrix in here. Let's save it in here. So suppose in this way, if we have multiple matrices that we want to monitor, we can create dashboard for it. How can we access this dashboard? Well, if you click here under the dashboard section, here, all the dashboards that we have created earlier will be shown in here. So I just created this test dashboard and this is the uh, matrix, the specific matrix that is uh, attached to the dashboard. You can, we can also kind of like 
see the timeline too we can change the timeline according to it and uh, we can see uh, this matrix uh, performance in different uh, time uh, time frame so that's very cool after the matrix part the next thing that we can do with this that uh, uh, we can create alarms for it so if we click in the alarm in here right now i don't have any specific alarm but i'm gonna create one so once i click create alarm in here so suppose you want to monitor a matrix uh, as i have matrix just only real to s3 just i won't use that one because uh, i don't have an ec2 lambda or other matrix because i'm not uh, using the service right now this account so once we select uh, we, once we click this select matrix option in here all the matrix that we uh, have seen earlier from the matrix sections will be uh, populated in here so let's uh, click the s3 once again or uh, let's click on the usage one it's a better one to uh, do all the testing okay so here uh, we have different sort of matrices related to the usage related to the usage so this matrix name there's a class so for an instance if we want to uh, get notified that how many times uh, for our s3 bucket this uh, get list bucket option list bucket option is being called for our s3 uh, s3 bucket so we're gonna select this one and uh, select matrix and now in here we can set up the threshold so for an instance if the static value is more than 100 so our uh, uh, our matrix is like if uh, this specific matrix is being called or api is being called more than 100 times then we'll get notification that's why you set the threshold to 100 and uh, it will be checking it, this uh, matrix in every five minutes that's okay for us and uh, we want to monitor one data point and uh, we're gonna change the treat missing data as good and in the next section now we do have few option in here so now we have uh, defined the threshold now we need to set up the alarm like once uh, uh, this uh, specific uh, matrix reach this threshold what action we want to take okay so when it's in alarm we do have few options we can uh, uh, point it to an sns topic and uh, under the sns topic so sns is another service where we can uh, create uh, a subscription so i have covered sns in another video please refer uh, to that uh, video i'm gonna add the video link under this video description if you want to have a look okay so under here under the, the if uh, we select this option that uh, create a new topic because currently i don't have any specific topic so uh here we can create one so default cloudwatch alarm create a new topic so uh, the topic name would be something like this and the email address here we can add email address you can add your email address in here so what's gonna happen when it will reach the 100 uh, threshold then uh, you will get a notification or email in your email address because you're defining or attaching your email address in here so if i click create topic first uh, one email address is required for it so uh I'm gonna just uh, type some random email address for now because this is more of a testing, right? So create topic, let's create the topic. So yes, the email point is this and we can also see it from the SNS uh, console. So if we go to the SNS and topic here, we have this one test topic and uh, actually it's not a text topic. It should be the default CloudWatch alarm topic. And it has a pending confirmation for the abc dot um, abc at the rate gmail dot com. In your case, you're gonna add your email address. So once it reaches the threshold, you want to get notified. So this is how we do the setup. So that's one action we can do. Beside that, we can also take some other actions too. If we want to do that, like any auto scaling action or any ec2 action, you can define that too in here. That's really cool. And then you can select next. You can give it a name. I'm going to call it something like test, test alert. And we're going to click next. And here's a quick review of all the settings that we have defined so far. And we need to click create alarm. 
So now we do have this one in the active state. Perfect. So, so far we have uh, covered uh, alarms, we have covered dashboard, we have covered uh, uh, matrix section. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna cover is rules, which is very important in uh, CloudWatch to monitor your services that you're gonna deploy in AWS. So under here you can create rules. So let's try to create a rule. Okay, so first we need to give it a name. So there are, uh, so let's uh, name it test, okay? And then the ev default, let's go with the default event bus and uh, rule with an event pattern or the schedule basis. So there are two type of, uh, two type of uh, rule you can create. One is a rule with an event pattern and then the other one is a schedule. So when we should use the schedule one and when we should use for a uh, uh, rule one. Well, the schedule one is uh, pretty straightforward. So suppose, uh, uh, let's talk about a scenario that is that uh, you do have a Lambda function, okay, that uh, uh, you have built and you want it to be triggered in a particular time every month. So what you can do, you can uh, create a uh, you can create a cron job so that uh, the, under the schedule you can create a cron job and uh, that cron job will run the trigger the lambda function and do some specific task that's uh, how we should use this schedule schedule one so if i click continue in event bridge scheduler in here so here this is where we can define the a cron expression so once we specify the hour the day the minute the year in here then uh, we can create our own uh, rule and once we do have this rule we can integrate this rule with our uh, uh, lambda function that we just talked about so that in that particular time uh, time zone or time window this uh, uh, this uh, scheduler will uh, trigger the lambda function and the lambda function will execute the code and uh, the action that we need to take care of maybe the lambda function can be used to uh, clean some uh, some files from your uh, uh, application the files are not being used. So in this way we can define many things under the Lambda function and uh, we can use this rule thing. Now let's talk about the event pattern. So for the event pattern, it is more of like service basis. So under service the name, we need to select any of the service. Let's uh, go with EC2 for an uh, instance. So EC2, then the event type. So here all sort of events uh, will be listed down in here. And if we want to get notification related to EBS volume notification, then we'll select this one. And uh, under EBS volume, even uh, we can go for any events or we can uh, specify the specific one. So it has like create volume, delete volume. So let's see, like if someone deletes any volume, we want to get a notification or modify a volume. So I'm going to select delete and then uh, a specific volume area. We can even select which specific volume it uh, is more applicable to. So we can do that or we can do it for all the errands. So here you can see an uh, event pattern preview is uh, populated in here. And then once it's there, then uh, we can add targets. Under target, we can have uh, many things like we can have Lambda function, we can have SNS topic like before, we can have uh, some SSM run command executing by, by this uh, event. A lot of things you can do in here. So uh, after selecting that, you have to select the parameter in here. And suppose uh, for this specific action, if you want to run a Lambda function, you can see the Lambda function from here. And once the Lambda function is here, then you can uh, configure and create this event pattern. So what's going to happen? So that means whenever there is an event uh, related to delete volume, this Lambda function will trigger and, uh, and uh, perform some specific uh, actions. So in this way, you can monitor our application very closely. Congratulations guys for reaching this far of this video. Well, today we've covered main things related to AWS CloudWatch. So now we know about CloudWatch uh, dashboard, we know CloudWatch rules, we know CloudWatch matrix, we know CloudWatch uh, alarms. So that's pretty cool. If you have any confusion or you have uh, anything that you need to have more detailed idea, please let me know under this comment section. I'm gonna reply in a very short period of time. If you want me to cover any specific topic, also let me know under this comment section and I'm gonna reply back. Um, thank you so much guys for watching my videos. It means a lot to me. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel because I'm planning to upload more and more videos related to cloud computing, related to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, also cybersecurity. So uh, that's all for today. Have a great and wonderful day.